right, folks, let's talk Barbie. Now, the first thing you should know is I was really cheering for this movie, for real. I like the Barbie core aesthetic. It was fun to see this whole big cultural moment around it, which isn't really a thing that happens very often anymore. And just before I went in, I saw Ben Shapiro whining on Twitter about how his producers made him see it, and it was so woke and terrible, blah, blah, blah. So, of course, I really wanted him to be completely wrong. But as it dragged on, an interminable two hours of dated, predictable contrivances, the verdict became undeniable. The Barbie movie is atrocious. Look, I am all for creative content with a good political message. White Lotus loved it. Squid Game loved it. I'm all for a kids-oriented movie that has jokes that go over the kids' heads. Legos movies, for example. Genuinely funny, some real political undertones. Or The Lorax, which is more overtly political but still succeeds as a great kids movie. My kids can sing every line from Let It Grow and therefore for better or worse, so can I. This movie was not funny or entertaining or family friendly. I breathed a sigh of relief that I was out of town so I did not make the mistake of bringing my six-year-old and having to explain jokes about penises and gynecological exams. <laughs> it was mildly horrifying to sit alongside little girls in their Barbie merch as they suffered through vulgar humor and a plot that was completely impenetrable for the kids while still managing to be thoroughly predictable for all of the grown-ups. No star actor or immaculate set design was going to rescue this mess. All right, so here's the basic plot, and it is basic as hell. It's roughly as follows. Barbie lives in a girl power utopia of Barbie land with all the various iterations of Barbie and alongside her erstwhile superfluous male Ken. Then she starts to lose her barbiness, suffering thoughts of death, losing her trademark high heel ready arched feet, developing a patch of cellulite on one thigh. So she is told she must travel to the real world in order to fix this, where she is shocked by the patriarchy, but Ken, he is enamored with it. He makes Barbie Land a patriarchy where dudes do the most stereotypical activities imaginable and women run around in Playboy bunny outfits. Barbie then returns alongside her new sassy human companions, a put-upon mom and an angsty tween. The three of them overthrow Ken and resubjugate him, but Barbie decides all of this Barbie-dumb perfection is no longer for her. She's gonna become a real girl, embrace the complicated reality of the real world, and presumably climb the corporate ladder. Late stage girl boss stuff, Sheryl Sandberg would be so proud. Now, the whole thing is way too preachy to be enjoyable or even to really be very effective as propaganda. It's sort of like AI wrote a screenplay based on 2010's white feminism. Not to mention the radicalism level is firmly set on safe for the army of brands that are raking in money off of this crap. It's a dumb person's idea of a smart movie, a liberal's idea of a revolutionary message. <laughs> One might ask why Mattel would choose to associate with a movie that was basically made by someone who clearly hates their product. The answer is obvious in the film because it never strays beyond the surface level consumer-friendly critique. Basically, yes, we realized Barbie's body and ethos was unobtainable, but we fixed it now. So you can go out, buy our products for your little girls, and it's basically like you're fighting the patriarchy. There is one throwaway line from the angsty tween about Barbie promoting consumerism, but you can't really take it seriously given the context that the whole movie rollout is a hyper-capitalist wet dream. According to Hollywood Reporter, Barbie has attracted more than 100 promotional partners worth tens of millions of dollars to Mattel, from custom pink Crocs to a product clothing line to hair dryers and everything in between. Merchants and brands rushed to cash in on Barbie mania, while companies including Progressive Insurance and General Motors used Barbie in custom TV and digital advertisements per uh, Hollywood Reporter. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zasloff promoted Barbie across his various properties, including an HGTV Barbie design competition, low-key sounds more interesting to me than the movie, a Food Network Barbie bake-off, and Barbie promotion graphics generously sprinkled across 15 different networks. Turns out the patriarchy Barbie insists she's subverting is getting wildly rich off her dated girl power platitudes and merchandise. The real moral of the Barbie movie for me is that you can make a dog shit movie and still make a fortune with the right marketing strategy. Quite the opposite of go woke and go broke, I suppose. In the resolution to the film, Barbie rejects her iconic ultra femme look for a sensible blazer and pale pink Birkenstocks, signaling to all the young girls and women out there that to be an evolved, complex woman, you should take off some of the sparkle, hide your curves, limit the glam, modest is hottest ladies. An odd fit for a moment when young girls are joyfully embracing and reclaiming the Barbie aesthetic, not out of repression, but actually out of power. As my 15-year-old informed me, Y2K bimbo is in, and why shouldn't it be? <laughs> in the year of our Lord 2023, we got deeper issues than whether or not Barbie's tits are out, okay? And more fundamental issues than the diversity ratios on corporate boards while they are systematically busting unions, screwing workers, and buying off politicians. And speaking of that, 
a far more profound and revolutionary message is being sent to studios like Warner Brothers by the actors and writers who are out on strike right now, demanding a small sliver of the vast wealth created by their work. So here's my advice for what it's worth. If you really want to mess with the patriarchy, take your Barbie ticket money and popcorn cash and send it to a strike fund instead. Um, Sagar, I just, there was no part of this that I really enjoyed. It's By funny. the end, I just wanted it to be over. I'm realizing I really think that this is also a difference in audience because be. I was telling you, I watched it with a bunch of very raucous, drunk gays here in Washington, D.C., and they were loving the movie. They are all. They were like, feeling the Kennergy? They were feeling the Kennergy. <laughs> uh, a lot of the women who were in the audience are exactly the type who love like Lehman Fem. So I was just like, hey, you know, it, it's almost like you get caught up in the crowd. You're like, yeah, you know, everyone's loving the jokes. Like they love the. The, the core message of it. So mm. I guess I just didn't look even at it as political. I was like, yeah, generic center left movie is gonna be generic center left. I enjoyed a lot of the Ken humor. I thought it was funny. Like Ken, uh, the patriarchy and like, but I don't wanna issue too many spoilers. So if you haven't seen it, I recommend you. Don't I mean, I already did the whole plot yeah. in my thing. So Fair enough. Spoiled already. Uh, but, but just like some of the jokes, like the Ken dance off or uh, what else am I thinking of? Uh, like the, the, Mount Rushmore, the Mount Rushmore filled with horses. There were like intermittent laughs and all those things. I thought it was light and I, I didn't, I didn't find that it was plotting. I didn't think it was, well, maybe because I saw Oppenheimer that morning, so anything could be. So <laughs> that could be, be that's short. fair. So, I don't know. I, I saw it and I was like, huh, that was humorous. I wasn't like, I love this movie. It's the greatest movie I've ever seen. I was like, it was kind of fun. But I'm telling you, my audience was obsessed with this movie. Like, would not that stop talking That is so about funny it. because yeah. I'm telling you, there was yeah. about to be a revolt among the, like, working so class funny. black audience that brought their little girls there. Yeah. And I'm talking, there were teeny, tiny kids. There were, right. you know, yeah, see, little I, girls of all I ages. Could, I could 100% see that. And it's, I'm also a mom, so I would have, I think, because I wouldn't have paid close attention. It's PG-13 right. is the rating. I wouldn't right. have paid close attention. I would have been like, that's eh, probably fine, you know, and Ida likes dolls, so I'll bring mm -hmm. her, you know. And thank God I didn't because, seriously, Early on, there's this scene with the Kens where they're joking about beaching each other off. And I was so shocked by having that in what is ostensibly like this kid's movie with all these little girls sitting around me that I just refused to believe that they actually intended that joke to be what I thought it was. And then there's all these jokes about like genitals and yes. gynecology. I'm like, what? And it's not like any of the funny stuff would land with the kids. Um, it wasn't really that funny for the grownups. And... They're relentlessly beating you over the head with this like patriarchy discourse that um, you know felt like Gamergate all over again or something like that was the level of messaging. It just mm. for me, it was a no. I could totally see that, yeah, especially for kids. I didn't consider that. That if there are a lot of kids going to this, yeah, I don't think I would. Do yeah, this. the lady next yeah. to me right after it was over, she turned to me and she was like, "That ain't no kids movie." <laughs> and that was oh yeah, yeah. And and towards the end of the movie, I mean, people were talking. They were like, there was like a murmur of discontent for probably mm. the last like. 20 to 30 minutes of the movie wow. did not land. All right, well, there you go. Hey guys, if you enjoyed seeing us react to each other's monologues, make sure you subscribe so that you can see our reactions to every single piece of commentary. That's right, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber today.